Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to RHS Wisley, where we're joined by a, just a select few people in the room, but lots of you hopefully watching um, online. Uh, my name's Sheila Das. I'm a garden manager here at Wisley, and I look after, amongst other things, the edible growing areas. So I'm really delighted today to be welcoming Manju Mahi, uh, uh, a really fantastic Thank chef, you. who I am mm. going to let introduce herself yeah. before I start <laughs> saying all the wrong things. I'll be here all day, but uh, in a nutshell, uh, my name is Manju Mali, as you said. I'm a chef and a cookbook author of six cookbooks, and uh, lately I've been teaching people how to cook uh, across the country and around the world, uh, using herbs and spices and everyday ingredients, especially from the UK, how to come up with really delicious dishes. And of course, uh, today's recipes are from my cookbook. Uh, it's Easy Indian. So uh, it's easy, and it's also quick. So I'm making an aubergine mash, bengan barta, if anyone's uh, up on Hindi, uh, and uh, a kira raita, which is a cucumber yogurt salad, and also koshimbir, which is a Western Indian dish with carrots, tomatoes, and onions. Fabulous. It sounds absolutely delicious. And I have a, a vested interest and a delight in being here because my, my of Indian origin, my father's Indian. So I'm really keen, actually, to see, Manji, about um, how you kind of fused that British Indian sort of mixture and to learn a bit more about that. I have to precursor this with the fact that I am not a cook. So uh, I'm not going to try and commentate on Manju's cooking. She's no, going no, to do that herself. It's fine. Yeah, it's really easy. Um, what I've done here is... Um, before I sauteed these aubergines in a little bit of oil, kind of um, seared them, so to speak, in order to remove the skin. But the skin is edible and it's easy. You can keep the skin on, but I've removed the skin of the aubergines and, uh, or brinjal and then chop it up, really. And that's going into my smoked aubergine mash. So I'm just going to chop that up. It's interesting. So brinjal, as opposed to begum, um, different words for the aubergine coming from different yes. regional parts of India. And um, in, in my family from Kolkata, that we would call it a brinjal. Um, and I love aubergine. I absolutely love it. Um, we've managed to grow quite a few this year. Really? At home. Excellent. Uh, but I'm interested, Manju, just to hear a little bit about, you've done some work looking at regional cooking. I'd love to know, yes. what, what was your, what's your regional favourite in India? Oh gosh, there's so many. Uh, I like the samosas or the shingaras. They're, they call the samosa different names across uh, India. And it's uh, not the cuisine of India, more the cuisines of India. Because it's massive, India is, uh, is you know ten times larger than the United Kingdom. So uh, they have various cuisines, and for example, in the north of India they'd use bay leaves. In the south of India they they'd use curry leaves, and never the twain shall meet, so to speak. So so that it's completely different. But what I've got here is, I suppose, a northern Indian dish, but it's fairly universal across India. And I've used shallots for extra flavour. Uh, are shallots grown in the UK? Absolutely, yeah. I'm, you talk to my mum, I have an onion and shallot obsession. <laughs> I grow many, many of them. They're great. Right, yeah. So, or you can use onions, and onions are grown here as well, aren't they? And you mentioned the aubergines. What's so sh special about the aubergines in the UK? I was just trying to figure out, are they from abroad generally, the big, large the ones? The big ones that you yeah. buy, that's a good question. And I think, unfortunately for most of us, we don't actually know where a lot of the food in our shops comes from, do we? And if you look at the labels, the chances are they're not going to be from the UK. Uh, certainly at some times of the year, they're not going to be from the UK. Yeah. So we're really keen here at Wisley to talk about seasonal eating and actually eat it so I won't after my aubergines have pretty much finished at home yes and I won't have any aubergines oh, this no. winter which is kind of oh. sad but there'll be other things yes there will have. like this uh, blend I'm uh, making here the base for the aubergines uh, you could use that for any vegetables even meat or chicken if you want or fish so once again I heated my oil up you could use sunflower oil rapeseed oil even olive oil if you want uh, and then I've added some shallots, you can use chopped onions, and then some garlic, sliced garlic. And then to that, I'm going to add a bit of ground cumin. This is made out of cumin seeds. Smell that. Is it lovely? Oh, I love yeah, it, yeah. absolutely. We add it to so much. It's brilliant, isn't it? It, it sort of uh, adds that Indian flavor, but Mexican as well. A bit of ground coriander. Again, it's the coriander seeds. Yep. So it's different from coriander leaves. Coriander leaves are the leaves. 
and coriander seeds are the seeds, so the flavors are totally different. Uh, but you can use both in one dish. So that's that. And then a pinch of chili powder. And of course, there are various degrees of chili powder. Uh, it depends on the chili. And talking of chilies, we've got some lovely ones uh, from the gardens here. Yeah, so we, we, I think we've got a, a couple of different types of, of chili. Which ones did we get you? Turtle claw. Yeah, this is weird. This is, I've never seen chilies like this. <laughs> They're amazing. I, I don't think in India either. <laughs> But uh, there's absolutely yeah. loads of different types of chilies that we've been growing this year. We've actually done a chili trial as yes. well. So I haven't actually personally grown them previously, yeah. um, but did at home this year. So we're currently drying them and then you right. can make them into flavors. Dare I try this one? Give it a go. Oh, I don't know. Right, I've got some <laughs> yogurt to hand. Like the general rule of thumb is, um, yeah, if, if there's a curry or a dish that's really hot, chili hot, uh, don't aim for water, beer or lager. Go for yogurt or any dairy-based products. So that's my... I'm going to have a go, actually. Go for Let's it. See, yeah. And at this point, I'm just going to say, if anyone yeah. in the room has got a question at any point, yeah. please raise your hand and we, we can come to you. And anyone who's watching online... Oh, I'll my pop gosh. A, pop right. a question okay. in the comments. Was that hot? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> right, I'm just going <laughs> to... It's my fault. My bad. Yeah, so... That's okay. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Absolutely. It's lovely. It's absolutely full of flavour. It's really nice. I've put them in here, so I've added my chilli, my spices... Just give that a mix. And then I'm going to add a touch of tomato puree. You can add fresh tomatoes if you want, but you want it to be all mushy and mashy, which you can uh, serve with pita breads or chapatis, naans even. Fantastic. So if you're using mix, fresh yeah. tomato, well, tomatoes are an interesting thing, interesting thing to talk about because people have often talked about the fact that they're not available here over the winter. However... If, like me, you've grown a gazillion tomatoes, <laughs> there are so many ways that you can store them okay. and then be able to add them to cooking. So really? um, make a sauce that you can keep yeah. in a jar or actually just throw your fresh tomatoes into the freezer, freeze them, and then when you come out to cook with them, they're just, you know, you just cook with them from frozen. Fantastic. So th there's so many ways that you can, you can store those things. It sounds good. It re you know, like I know during COVID, um, people were growing and planting and cooking at home. And uh, my book came out during COVID, and I did no marketing for it. And, you know, the sales rocketed, and I thought, oh, no, I haven't marketed the book. And it was interesting because everyone was cooking, which was great. Um, and uh, during uh, the pandemic as well, uh, I was sort of feeding people and trying to engage with people through food because a lot of people were quite isolated and lonely. And, um, you know, because I teach uh, the elderly generally, all those classes stopped, and then uh, I had to uh, try and think of different ways of engaging with people. So they'd check in regularly, and then we'd talk about shopping and food and where they got their food from. So it was all good. And uh, as a result of that, I was uh, awarded an Empire Medal for my services. Oh, wow, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, also, I was asked to attend the coronation. Wow. What was all that about? I and don't that, know. <laughs> and that's the power of food, isn't it, Mike? It is. It's really... Food it... brings so many people of different walks of life together, and, and it was great. And I sat next to Emma Thompson. Oh, wow. So <laughs> <laughs> Just I thought I'd name drop there. And she was moaning about me not bringing in uh, any food. But I thought, you know, it's not a movie. We can't have popcorn or anything like that. But uh, it was really good fun. It was uh, interesting and fascinating and... Could have yeah. been quite interesting, couldn't it, at, yes. the, at the coronation? Absolutely. <laughs> it was all, all fun and games, and then went back and cooked. So. Fabulous. Great. <laughs> and uh, made coronation chicken. Of course. And that quiche. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I, I sort of adapted it. Yeah. Slight, somewhat. But uh, yeah. yeah, so it was all good fun. So any questions on spices or anything like that? I used cumin, coriander, a bit of chili powder. You can add a touch of turmeric. It has a lot of antiseptic qualities, turmeric. And uh, if you're making a dish with turmeric, if you add a bit of black pepper to it, that kind of uh, exacerbates or enhances the healing properties of turmeric, the black wow. pepper. So wow. Yeah, I think we might, have yeah. A, we might have a question. Yeah. Ah, I've got a question Ooh. over here. Oh, hi. Um, Manju, I wondered for people who aren't familiar with um, South Asian or Indian cooking, what's the biggest mistake that people tend to make when cooking, say, a curry? 
Well, from experience, uh, what I've noticed is uh, people think uh, a curry means heat, means chili heat, so they add a lot of chili uh, in advance. Like, I didn't realize those cute little baby chilies <laughs> would be uh, so hot. So, less is more when it comes to Indian cooking. So, cook your spices, but add a little bit first, and then if you want to spice it up, add a bit more, because it's difficult to remove heat and spice flavor from a dish once you've added loads of it, bucket loads. So, yeah, spoons are good. So, uh, normally in my store cupboard, I've got cumin, coriander, garam masala, chili powder, and turmeric. So, that's cumin, coriander, garam masala, chili powder, and turmeric. Garam masala is a blend of spices. You know the warming spices you'd get in mulled wine, for example, like cloves, cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, that goes into garam masala, and each spice company has their own blend, mm. yeah, even supermarkets. There's a question over there as well, so while we're doing that, I'm going to grate some ginger. So uh, what you can do is uh, peel the outer skin of ginger with a spoon, so that saves uh, a lot of waste, really. So there's not much waste, and just grate it in. And this is nearly done. Okay, so ready for our question. Hi, I'm just wondering if there's a difference in flavour or preparation between the fresh chilies and the powder, the chilli powder. Yes, the notes will be different, the heat notes. It depends on uh, what chilli it is. Um, size does matter when it comes to chilies. The general rule of thumb is the smaller the chilli, the hotter the chilli. But do you know where the heat comes from in a chilli? Well, that's what generally people think, but a lot of chili growers are saying, no, tell them it's the pith of the chili, the vein. That's where the heat comes from. So I'll just so cut one in Popularly thought to be the seeds, but yeah. Yeah. yeah the pith. So it's, uh, I don't know if anyone can see that, but yeah, it's, uh, it's not the seeds. So it doesn't matter if you de-seed a chili or you, or you don't. Um, it's that pith. That's the, the lethal bit, <laughs> which contains the highest uh, amount of capsaicin. And I've got some friars' hats here, which are amazing. <laughs> they're, They're so cute. They really don't even wear it. But uh, so I'm just going to clear this area. So interestingly, when yeah. I, I, I visited India and I, I, um, I went to see my cousin, who I hadn't seen for a very long time, and uh, since I was a child, and she said, oh, I'll, I'll make you an omelette. That will be all right for your... For your for your yeah. introduction, but of course she put some chilies in it. Of course, they put chilies and, in everything, uh, even desserts, you know. They were possibly a little <laughs> fresher and a little hotter oh. than any chilies I'd ever yeah. eaten. It was an interesting moment that we bonded over yeah. as we got to know each <laughs> other better as adults. Excellent, excellent. That's good, that's good. Yeah, yeah. in India, like, say you wanted to just have a, a plain meal and then you order an omelette, you're right. Yeah. You, you think it's just going to be eggs and maybe a bit of black pepper and salt but they put chilies, <laughs> they put coriander leaves, onions, you name it. And you think, oh, no, that's not what I asked for. But anyway, <laughs> um, that's what they tend to do. They, they love spice and they miss spice. And it becomes like an addictive thing, spice. And it's really good for you because there are no calories in spice. It's natural. And you can combine it with herbs and ingredients from British gardens. It's, uh, it's really good. So that's a really interesting element, isn't it, to this, this type of cooking, is that all of that variety, I think we're hearing lots in the news at the moment about our gut microbiome and eating a variety of plants, and this thing's been bandied around, I eat 30 different plants a week, which sounds like a lot, yeah. but I know when, certainly when my mum cooks for me and all these spices are going in, mm. you know, we've counted up 15 to 20 different plants in a meal. Wow. Um, just alone, wow. from one meal, because you've got all the spices yes. and then all those fresh ingredients. I see what you mean. Okay, right. So I've got a little uh, salad going on here as well. And I'm seasoning the salad with a warm dressing. Uh, so it's called tadka, or uh, tempering the salad. I'm heating some oil up. Sunflower oil is fine. And to that, I'm going to add brown mustard seeds. Yeah. So I'm going to wait till the oil heats up and add a few of the seeds. Once they pop, and they haven't popped, so I'm just going to increase the heat of that. And do that, yeah. Yeah. It'll start to crackle and pop. And that means uh, it's making the spices edible. They're palatable because you can't eat these spices raw. Mm. Generally, you toast spices 
and then you release their aromas and also make them digestible. Mustard seeds are quite firm, so mm. it's best to heat them up. So I'm just going to go a bit higher on that. And once they crackle and pop, then I'll add the remaining mustard seeds. And to that, let me see, my salad has got a bit of tomato, carrots, red onion, just mixed up, really. But you want to j jazz it up because it's quite bland like this. So, of course, being Indian, we're going to spice it up. I'll add a bit of lemon juice to it. And they're beginning to sizzle. So I'll add the remaining spices. Any more questions? Anything else? Any? I have a question my mum wanted yeah. me to ask you. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mum, do you have, are there things in, in particular Indian dishes, so various ingredients that you really can't get here? And if, if there are, mm. um, what do you replace them with? How do you go about yes, thinking about yeah. that? And I guess this comes back to your kind of fusion of the yeah, of what's um, available. Like, for example, black cardamoms gives a nice smoky flavor in barbecues. So if, if you're a you know, fan of meat and, or sausages or anything, black cardamoms, you can get hold of them. They're great. But what you could do is spice up your sausages or the meat or whatever you're barbecuing or searing on a, in a pan uh, with a bit of cinnamon, possibly. So that could be the replacement. A yeah. uh, lot of the woody herbs like rosemary really lift food up. Yeah. So all the uh, herbs that you'd get in the UK, yeah. Um, yeah. even sage, it really adds good flavor, even to curries. Yeah, so, fabulous. Yeah, so, and that's called fusion. What I'm doing is fusion cooking. Yeah. So a bit of British, a bit of Indian, and not too messy. Again, less is more when it yeah, comes yeah. to doing that. So what I'm going to do now is the mustard seeds are popping, adding some chili to it and a bit of turmeric. And then what I'm going to do is put it here. So I've just got some chopped up tomatoes. I have some red onions grated carrot, so it encourages kids as well to um, eat a lot of veg. And it's got lemon juice in here, and then, as you can see, it's all ready to go on top of the salad. So it's turmeric, bit of green chili, mustard seeds, Really sizzled as it yeah. went down. Yeah, happy with that? Yeah, good. You can use brown or black mustard seeds. So that's my salad. And then what I've got here is a grated cucumber. So I'll just squeeze the water from there and mix it with my yogurt, which I put over there. So I've just got some Greek style yogurt. I Mix think the it thing up. I, I love the most about Indian cooking is you start eating the meal probably <laughs> ages before. Do really. you? But just <laughs> right. because you can smell it. Yeah. It's just those smells. As soon as yeah, you, as soon it as is you yummy. squeeze that cucumber, I could smell yeah. it. I it's see. Really yes, it's gorgeous. It really is. A bit of sea salt, a bit of black pepper, and I might put a touch of cumin to it. Right, let me just I'll use this. And uh, let me see, what other chilies could we use? We could try one of these, which is Joe's Long Chilies. Do you know much about these? The I, I am a chili ignoramus. Uh, really? Okay. Any chili <laughs> aficionados <laughs> in the house? <laughs> Joe's Long, anyone? Oh, it smells good. <laughs> anyway, it who are, yeah, right, I'll just uh, chop a little bit of that to garnish on top. But obviously, bear in mind uh, that it will contain quite a bit of heat. Uh, so that could be the topping on top of there. And that's my cucumber raita, or kira raita. So I'll put it on the side there. I'll just do that. So, yeah, it's just using up store-covered ingredients to create unusual dishes like this one. But, um, yeah, health-wise, you use less salt, less sugar, less processed food. Like, samosas are processed. 
because uh, you know you're deep frying and then you you're getting uh, the batter and all that sort of thing and the dough. Um, Indian sweets are processed, so that's what I try and tell people, which is fine. I don't want anyone to stop eating things they love to eat, but in moderation. And uh, if you bulk it up with salads and spice them up with lovely flavors and lovely spices, then uh, it really works well. I'm just going to do the aubergine mash. But equally, I guess with those processed things, Manju, it is about whether it's processed or we're hearing a lot about ultra-processed, yes. aren't we? So yes, I know. even those processed things that are things that are made through a process, at least if the ingredients are fresh yep. and ideally, you know, they, you know they've been grown without chemicals That's and it. horrible inputs. It's, yes. it's, not, yeah. it's, it's absolutely fine, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Again, yeah, balance. Uh, like in India, it's become the diabetes capital of the world, or Delhi. It's because... Uh, they never used to have diabetes, but what happened was the advent of fast food and, of course, less agricultural uh, jobs and careers. So people were, you know, leading sedentary lifestyles like the Western lifestyle. And sadly, yeah, they just developed diabetes. And, yeah, it's, it's trying to, you know, get a lot of greens in your diet and that sort of thing. And exercising, of course, you know, that's important. And one thing I've certainly noticed in India is, yeah, just longer working days, people eating really late. Yes. And eating a big meal really late <laughs> than going to bed and getting yeah. up early. And, yeah. It's really funny. I went to, like, I was invited to a dinner party. Well, I've been invited to lots of dinner parties in Delhi. And I was invited to this dinner party at nine. I thought, fine, we'll be eating very shortly. So I sat there and then um, th there were people who came from Delhi as well sitting there. And then they were passing around snacks. And I, I was really hungry at nine o'clock. And I was just like stopping, thinking, is this the dinner? And I was sort of sitting there and eating these snacks. And I was really hungry. And then when the host went out of the room, I asked one of them, I said, uh, are we having dinner? They went, oh, yeah. I said, are you guys hungry? But we're starving. <laughs> because, you know, it, two hours went by. It was 11, 11, 11 30. And I'm thinking, what are we going to eat? And then I went, I'm hungry. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and they were eating really late. Yeah. Indians eat late. I know Americans eat early, don't they? Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know what's the average time that people eat here. Yeah, but, and uh, I think there's lots of talk at the moment about it that actually what's important is the amount of time in between food, isn't it? So yeah. giving your stomach a rest, basically. Absolutely, um, yeah. Is a really important thing. Yeah. So and, and, and snacking less, if you yeah. can help it. Yeah. But just, yeah, three meals, which uh, are just uh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. N nothing too, too kind of spread out. Wow, that looks great. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, aubergine mash. Uh, heated the oil up. Sunflower, rapeseed, even mustard oil if you want. Uh, then I added shallots or onions, a bit of garlic. Uh, then I added some spices like cumin, coriander, you can add a bit of garam masala at the top, some chili powder, turmeric, mixed it all up. I seared my aubergines, so I, I peel the skin. The skin is edible. You can eat the skin if you want. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, I could use that. I'll eat it. But I just thought that's the style of the dish. They like it sort of mashed up without too, too much of a woody texture or taste to the skin or the dish. Mm. Uh, then added some tomato puree. If you've got fresh tomatoes, you can add uh, fresh tomatoes. Heated it all up, combined it, uh, added my sort of seared aubergines without the skin, and then garnished it with a few coriander leaves, and you can have it with chapatis or naans. Bear in mind, naans uh, are made out of white flour yeah. as opposed to uh, wholemeal flour. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people say to me, Manju, my nans come out really tough, like footballs or something, and they're awful. It's because we don't have really high ovens. You know, restaurants do have ovens which are really high heat, and they're used to cooking nans. So that's why our nans may not sort of turn out the same way. So you're better off buying the ready-made nans because they're baked properly in those massive ovens. Yeah. It's almost like baking bread, really. Sometimes you think, you know, my bread doesn't turn out like the sourdough that you get in the shops, <laughs> maybe. So, <laughs> yeah, we have, we've yeah. had a question. Oh. I actually, I'm, I'm concerned this question yeah. may be more for me, maybe, yeah. but the question from somebody who's watching the live stream. Oh, right. okay. I'd like to save some of my seeds from my chilies to mm. grow on next year. Yeah. Uh, do I need to double up on the number of seeds I plant as they're not F1? 
So, okay, do you want to state that? No. no yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, just um, as I've said, I'm not an expert chili grabber. Oh, God, goodness me, I can see RHS advisory people in the room now who are yeah. going to be police my answer. Next. Um, yeah. But just to, just to clarify that for people. So a lot of this is about, you know, there's so much that I can see in front of us that you can grow yourself. Um, and I, I also look after the member seed scheme here. So food and seeds, really important connection. Um, so the thing to think about when you're saving seeds, and this goes for your chili and anything else, is an F1 variety is something that's got two parents somewhere that get crossed each year. Um, so you need to go back to those parents to get the seed. Um, if something's not an F1, you hold the golden key to food for the rest of your life. Wow. So basically what you can do is, is collect the seed of most things. Now, this is it, 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 not all, some things save seed better than others. But so for your chilies, have a go at collecting the seed, um, drying it out and storing it till the next year. You don't necessarily need to save double the amount of seed. Um, if your seed is viable, it will go. So, so give it a go. Um, I would be my advice with any seed saving. Um, and if you can do that and then you grow the chilies the next year, you can save the seed again and you can grow the chilies the next year and you can save the seed again and you can save the seed again and if you do that potentially you end up with a chili that's not whatever fryer's hat or whatever it is it's your chili <laughs> wow so, amazing amazing yeah. um what kind of a climate do chilies grow in what, what's the best climate do you yeah think? they want hot weather um They're so in, yeah. a, in a cold dreary summer they don't do terribly well but if you've got any protected space that's a really helpful thing to do and you can grow them on your windowsill um, or in a greenhouse, but they do. They want a bit of heat and sunshine. Um, and there's, you know, there's just, just actually, they want to be well watered, but not mm. soggy and sitting in water too often. So they're not too bad. Yeah. So if you haven't got any chilies, mm. mind you, yeah. here's my chili challenge to you: okay. to maybe pop a pot of chilies on your window sill yes. next summer and see how they go. I'll try that definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I will. What kind of chili should I grow then? Would you? Advise oh God! Me? Right, I'm going to ask a question. Anybody? <laughs> anybody? A, a good chili grower? Um, I tried a few this year, but obviously standing up here now, the names all escape me. But uh, we can come back on that one, I think. <laughs> Unless no anyone problem. in the room has any suggestions. And what about herbs? Like, I want to use British herbs in my Indian dishes. What kind of herbs could I grow in a pot or in my garden? Yeah, so coriander. Um, you yeah. could get some basil going either, yeah, on your mm. windowsill or in the garden. Really? Yeah. Um, all number of things, mm. actually. Uh, tarragon. As you nice. mentioned, rosemary already yeah. is really yeah. good. That's easy to grow. I, I find rosemary easy to grow. Yeah. But I find coriander leaves difficult. They can be, yeah, yeah. a little bit, little bit yes. temperamental. Yeah. I know. Yeah, but the main thing I would say is to, to have a go and find the things that do work in your particular garden or environment that you have success with mm -hmm. and, and definitely stick with those. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah that sounds good. And uh, do slugs hate coriander and those type of <laughs> things? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just, the lady over here shaking her head, no. Some yeah. slugs will basically... Yeah, I thought, oh, it's too spicy for them. They're British slugs. No, so I thought they'll maybe. eat anything, pretty much. <laughs> really? Really? They don't care, do they? Um, yeah. What they actually like is stuff that's already not that healthy or is on its way really? out or, oh, is, or, or conversely okay. is very, very young. When things are in midlife and fairly robust, they tend to leave them alone a bit more as a general rule. Okay, so um, it's about know. sort of taking that's care brilliant. of your young seedlings yeah. and also cleaning up mess and rubbish, which is also what yeah. they do. Great. So. Do you want to try? I do. I'd yeah. love to try. Yeah, Thank go you. for it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't um, sort of tasted it myself. Spoon. I might um, do a quick taste test as well. I've gone straight in for the aubergine. Yeah. I love aubergine. Let me try and not get a bit that's too big. <laughs> that's so good. good yeah thank you <laughs> good, I'm going to chew good. down the microphone yeah. <laughs> I'll just uh, taste the carrot salad for flavour yeah I'm going to try this fries hat fries yeah. hat chilli it was easy any questions or anything anybody would like to ask anything about spices um, yeah if we just hang on, we'll get the mic over to yeah, you so yeah. we can hear you. Can you grow any of the Indian spices in England? Um, a lot of the things that Manju has mentioned, so things like cumin and obviously the turmeric that she's using and many of the things in garam masala probably want something a bit hotter than we can offer them. So, and it's not, I think, also, 
people are really, really worrying, aren't they, about air miles at the moment and should I have things that have come from a long way away? And what I definitely think is, we, you know, it's not about eliminating all those things altogether. You know, if you can have a lot of your base ingredients being things that are grown locally um, and in a really healthy way, i.e. without chemicals and all those interventions, um, actually pulling in some of these spices from elsewhere can be really positive. So, yeah, in reality, a lot of those things quite hard that really give it the hot kick. Um, I think are quite a challenge in this country. But equally, you know, you can get really good supplies of those things. So I definitely not discourage people from using them. Great. The fresh ingredients are all from here, aren't they? Yeah. All of them. They're from the garden. Yeah. All these. So this Amazing. is a, so, a Wisley cooked meal. Yeah. yeah. It's just the spices, as you say. Yeah. So that was the only thing. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. And here's another thing that maybe we'd look at the carrot, Manju, that you yes. had over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> look at, Yeah. That's great, isn't that? Just the best <laughs> carrot. Yeah. That's a Wisley carrot. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So I think just a, a celebrating the fact that maybe they don't have to look like what they look like on Bugs Bunny or something like that. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, and actually, yeah, exactly. a carrot that looks like that is just going to taste amazing. So go for yeah, it. Yeah, and what you could do, actually, I'm just going to show you, is yeah. uh, saute the greens. Oh, the green yes, bits. lovely. You can wash them and... Uh, like, you won't be eating this because I haven't washed them. So, uh, wash them, chop them up, heat your oil up. So, I'll just add a bit of oil. Again, sunflower, rapeseed. But I suppose rapeseed is grown here, so yep, I can yep. uh, yeah, use um, that oil as opposed to olive oil. So, but can you use olive oil? You can do. It doesn't yeah. really impair the flavor or impart a Mediterranean flavor to Indian food. You know, yeah. again, it's a fusion thing. Yeah, so and it's, it's, it is one of the one of the better oils, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I believe. absolutely. So uh, do that. I've got some uh, garlic here somewhere. I'll just get my garlic. Okay. And again, it's just using up all the ingredients that you grow at home, and not wasting anything. Absolutely. So. So, kind of no-waste cooking. I think we have another question in the room here. So, it wasn't a question. It was a really quick, quick comment. I sort of missed it a bit. But just to say that my friend grew turmeric on her kitchen windowsill in the basement. So it's like oh, wow. Very good. So give it a go, turmeric, yeah, on your windowsill. Go. I'm going to do that then. I'll so, give that it a go. would mean ginger as well would work? Growing ginger, root ginger, possibly? Pot potentially. I would say with both of those plants, probably the issue that most people would have in their house is humidity. So they probably want to be in a slightly more humid environment. See, but um, but so, as with anything, I think it's worth, worth giving it a go. So I'm just going to, yeah, heat this up. So just saute the garlic a bit. And just add my greens. This is really interesting as well, isn't it? Because we've got so used to throwing away bits of our plants that actually we can eat. So things like the leaves around the cauliflower, um, yep. you can actually use a lot of those. It's um, all edible, isn't it? It's not like grass. No. Grass no. is not digestible, is it? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, you can make uh, sautéed greens, like a sarg, you know, or balak dish. Lovely. And it looks gorgeous on the plate. So you can have it, like, as a side relish or a side dish. I'd add a bit of chilli. Let's use, let's use the red one, which is the friar's hat. Interesting. Yeah. I suppose the shape, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I don't think you can get friar's hat in a supermarket, could you? Possibly not, and I think that's something that's really powerful about growing your own food. When I, when I first got into growing and had an allotment, I was blown away by the variety of things that you could grow that you just don't find in the supermarket. Yeah. I mean, you go into the supermarket, you might see two types of squash. You won't see just two types of squash in our garden, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and all of that feeds then into that variety, doesn't yeah. it, about variation in our diet and absolutely. the diversity. But the other bonus from that is you can find different varieties of things and you might find that climate wise one does better and one does worse so by actually not putting all your eggs in one basket okay. you're going to have food that succeeds so we've got our it's almost like crispy seaweed it These is a carrot it tops. does look like that yeah carrot top subji um, a question that's come in on the, the online chat yeah. you is um, any tips for great low effort dishes to cook for a dinner party yeah. Uh, something easy to prep beforehand or that you can cook while you're distracted? Um, yeah, it depends on how sort of uh, 
posh your dinner party is. But again, the carrot salad, like if, if you want to do some side dishes, I made that within minutes, didn't yeah, I? Yeah. I just, uh, it's the prepping that takes the longest. But if you've got ready-made vegetables or grated carrot in the house or whatever, you could uh, just rustle this up, the carrot salad. Uh, potatoes, if you've cooked some potatoes, season them with a bit of mustard seed, turmeric and dried red chilies. So you've got like a Bombay aloo, a quick mm. Bombay aloo. Mm. Um, uh, meat dishes, well, they take longer, mm. but um, uh, don't be afraid of using curry paste if you uh, want to rustle things up. As long as you cook uh, the meat thoroughly, especially if it's poultry, yeah. cook it for at least 10 minutes. But yeah, just saute it in a bit of the curry paste or make a marinade out of the curry paste with a bit of yogurt, a bit of butter, lemon juice, cumin, uh, possibly a bit of garam masala, make up the marinade, put your meat in the marinade, and then bake it in the oven. Mm. So that's a quick, fancy dish as well. Fantastic. For 20 minutes. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Great. I'm going to try a little bit yeah. of these carrots. Yeah, really? Tops, I haven't actually. washed yeah. the tops. So. That's all right. I don't <laughs> mind. They've, I know where they've come from. Yeah. And uh, no, no carrots yeah. were sprayed in the growing. Mm. It's crispy. Yeah, it's nice. Mm, it? yeah. It's crispy. Like if you wanted oh, to lovely. make uh, crispy seaweed like you'd get in uh, Chinese takeaways, for example, uh, what you could do is um, spread your carrot tops uh, on an oven tray, uh, sprinkle with a bit of oil, um, a pinch of sugar, and a pinch of black pepper and salt, and pop it in the oven for 10 minutes, and you've got crispy seaweed out of the carrot tops. Amazing. Thank <laughs> you. Any other questions from Andrew before we, before we wrap up? Just just check off. All right, one more. And then everyone knows everything, <laughs> which is great, <laughs> which is good. Because yeah. <laughs> maybe too much information sometimes is too much information. I was just curious about paprika, which you haven't mentioned, but I like to use. When would you use paprika? Yeah, you could use it in a marinade. Um, for example, uh, if I make a tandoori chicken style marinade, I add paprika also for the redness of the dish instead of red food coloring that a lot of restaurants and a lot of, sort of uh, people do use. So paprika is a good one, and it really lifts the flavor. There's something called degi mirch in uh, India, and that's sort of from the paprika family. It's a uh, Kashmiri chili, they call it, oh, wow. and it's quite sweet. So, yeah, paprika is good. Yeah, use it in your cooking, absolutely, in your Indian cooking. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Everyone, thank you, Manju. That was Not really, really lovely yeah. and absolutely delicious. I, uh, and just yeah. really exciting, just fresh food from thank this you. garden, straight here, yeah. ready to eat. And it, they're all in my book as well, Easy Indian Cookbook. Great. And, uh, if you're stuck, uh, you can uh, text me on socials, The Real Manju, uh, or my website, manjumali.com. But don't confuse me with the novelist. Uh, who writes erotic novels. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, you could ask me any questions about uh, <laughs> love and I'll see what I can do. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.